Hello, hello. Welcome to the Cosmos SDK community call. Um, today we have a few things on the agenda. Um, I want to give everyone updates on the store work that we've been doing, our V2, our server work that we've been doing, the other V2, um, the vesting work or the lockup work that we've done, bank, uh, some of the IVL work, the new Mint module, or bank and Mint are new, and then also some other things we want to achieve in Q2. Past that, is there anything else anyone would want to ask or have questions on? Awesome, awesome. Maybe as things go through, we'll have things to discuss. Um, I'll just share the hack MD. So starting off, um, updates. Uh, the store. So as most of you know, we've been working on a store V2. Um, this has been ongoing for a while. Um, we are at a place where we are beginning QA. Um, the migration has, um, the migration code has completed. There's possibly some API changes we will be making um, just to help clean up the, over the overall store, make it simpler, um, and just make it easier and more ergonomic to use. Just as we were integrating it into Server V2, we discovered some stuff that we actually didn't need um, because Store V2 was designed um, with Base App in mind, but we made the decision of integrating it into V2. And that kind of leads into Server V2. So as a quick reminder, what is Server V2? Um, Server V2 is a entirely new design for the core of the Cosmos SDK. Um, when working with the Cosmos SDK, many of you guys probably know the, the concept of, sex like someone's trying to join. Oh, they got approved. Um, the concept of base app um, and that in base app and how store interacts with the SDK. Uh, and so we, new features were being requested at all times um, to be added. And what we discovered was it's very hard to release stuff with confidence at the base app level. Um, there's a lot of edge cases that are very hard to account for. The concurrency model is very scary. And so we kind of made the decision that we wanted to work on a V2 that is far simpler and enables a lot more use cases in the future, um, like proving and also different forms of execution. Um, and with we will be able to do that with a lot more confidence. We're, we're getting closer to it running, um, and we're on the verge of it running it, running a chain with it. Um, and then after that, we'll be able to quickly progress into um, any of the other cleanups and changes we want to make. Of course, this will be part of the next release, but it's an optional upgrade, meaning that you don't have to use server v2 or store v2. Um, you can keep going with the current base app. There isn't um, there's there isn't a lot of breakage happening in the SDK that is going on right now uh, for the next release. And so it'll be a lot simpler than the last two releases to do the upgrade for. But of course, if you do want to take advantage of the high performance of store v2, um, and the simplicity of server v2 and a lot of the features it enables, then there are some API breaks that you need to do. But the nice thing here is you can do them over time, meaning you can do them, you can make, you can do one module at a time. And then like once you've migrated all the modules over the next like six months, let's say, um, then you can migrate to server v2. So we did try to make it as backwards compatible as we could to enable um, people to upgrade in the more seamless fashion without having to stop the world, break everything, and go move forward. We also, uh, as part of the next release, there's going to be this accounts module that we've been talking about for a while as, as well. With the account module, um, we implemented vesting, so and we we changed uh, the verbiage to lockup because vesting wasn't. We got told by some teams and some lawyers that this is an actual vesting. Um, it's more of lockup, and so we did lockup. We changed it to lockup, and there's uh, clawbacks will be added as a separate uh, vesting type, um, and so those will be available as well. This does mean that we did deprecate creation of vesting accounts the old way. 
And we did this because it is a security issue that teams have run into in the past that users can squat addresses or send, if let's say you create an account, someone can send something to the, as the first transaction, send it there and lock it for 25 years or something. And then you can never really get access to um, your account. Um, and so we deprecated that and wanted to really usher kind of a new simpler way of doing things where the accounting of vesting is also not happening in bank and staking, it's actually happening within the account. Um, next, the bank module. So there's a lot of complexity in the bank module for something it's meant to do for such a simple usage. And so we do want to work towards a bank V2. Um, so, yeah, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just had a quick uh, question about the the accounting. Uh, the the old vesting modules needed to track the the uh, amount that was staked in order to mm -hmm. uh, reason about the the amount that needed to be encumbered uh, from from transfer out of bank. Uh, but the uh, uh, so is that uh, that that same tracking could reasonably do be done just in the uh, staking module itself to give it a quick query for uh, for for how much has been net staked over time. Uh, yeah. Is, is that where the accounting moved? Uh, here, let me actually share my screen and I can pull up the code. Um, um, so you can, let me increase. It actually is a bit different from what you suggested. And so in the lockup account here, um, if we go to the base lockup account, it's actually being done. Uh, where are you? Here's the struct. So it's actually being, all the accounting for the vesting is being done in the account itself. It's not actually being done in bank or staking. Um, and the reason is we want to move away from this implicit dependency graph that different modules create. Like staking has an um, implicit dependency on bank, staking has an implicit dependency on bank through delegation tracking and non-delegation tracking. Vesting has an implicit dependency on staking and bank due to how vesting is accounted for in bank and staking. And so to move away from that, we moved into the direction that the lockup account itself will do that counting of delegations um, and moving the from from delegate locked to delegate free and to be able to do all that logic does that make sense uh yeah that makes sense uh just a quick thing you don't need uh both delegate locked and free you uh you can do it with just the sum of the two but that's a a, a side matter i understand yeah. it's now uh internal to the account yeah yeah okay um, yeah essentially the, yeah it's basically internal how it's done internal you also don't have to use this lockup the nice thing of this design is um where are you right here uh so it's like we we recreated the same locking accounts the same vesting accounts continuous locking delayed periodic and permanent um and these essentially just wrap the base lockup account um we are uh, we did discuss like allowing people to pass in a lockup account, uh, pass in a base account that can be used instead of the default. And so at that point, you'd be able to pass in anything you want, but the you'd be able to simply add your own custom vesting without having to like fork this um, module or anything like that. That would uh, that looks like this. Um, pum, pum, pum. So it's like when you're creating the accounts keeper, you're here, you're just creating, you're just adding the account. Um, and then, so you can add in whatever type of account you want. Um, you can also just like have an account like this, just look at an Agoric account or like have the logic in Agoric and then it just like communicates through the contract and stuff like that. So it's really freeing on what you can do. Um, and this kind of like leads into like another point that I'll touch on later. Um, Tarek, you had a question? Yeah, I was just curious about um, if you're using vesting accounts now, will it be migrated? 
Uh, they won't be migrated by default um, because we didn't want to do that as part of this release. Now that we have time, we might have it, but it will be an optional thing. So we don't want to make it a mandatory thing. So users will still need to have the old desk account in their app.go, but uh, we also don't know all the vesting types you guys have. And so we were, our vesting would be like a lazy migration in the sense that maybe the first time the user submits a transaction, they're gonna have to pay a bit more gas. And then, um, and then the transaction will also pay for the migration to the new account. Um, but, um, and instead of like stop the world, have to like migrate all these vesting accounts that are in state. Um, so it's kind of like a simpler way of doing it. Uh, but of course, you'd be if you want to do the migration, you can. Thanks. Any other questions on the vesting lockup stuff? That's awesome. Um, then bank. So we are starting the working group on bank on and just right now it's a it's a blank slate um we are looking for people to join the working group sam um the from the sdk team will be leading that she's on this call right now um sam ricotta and so if you do want to attend let us know and we can add you to the slack channel and to the call um and the idea with bank is we want to simplify it we want to make it that there is like a form of uh some ideas are like denom permissions so right now um anyone could technically mint denoms um that's within the state machine meaning another module um but we don't want everyone to have that suit of permissions we want only some modules to have these permissions and so uh, making that more strict um and there's a various uh, amount of discussion that has happened over various bank designs. Um, I think, Jim, you've also been a part of a few. And so we just want to move forward on that. Um, and this is part of our three-step process uh, for working towards enshrined LSM, um, or like just using, a, just creating an LSM module in the SDK, um, because we want it to be safe and efficient um, and easily and, and better designed. Any questions or hands on people that want to join the bank working group? Sporthy, um, I'm Jim, you want to be in there just because I know uh, you guys. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you could just pop your email addresses in the comments, and that would just be a bit easier for me. Awesome, awesome. Um, IVL. Um, IVL, we have V1 and V2. Um, V1 is now running on a few mainnets. Um, there were a couple issues with IVL V1. There's a surprising amount of edge cases in how we did um, the migration. We wanted to do a lazy migration instead of a stop the world migration just because IVL v0 was so slow in terms of uh, doing gets and so we did a lazy migration um there's a lot of edge cases in the lazy migration osmosis uh dydx and paloma ran into them um but they've all been fixed um or we haven't heard issues from the dydx and osmosis team um still need to sync with uh Tariq. um they're seeing some issues and i'm just not sure if it's IVL related or not right now um, and so, but then there's IVL v2, um, which will be part of storage v2. Um, IVL v2 has an entirely new design. Um, it uses SQL Lite, um, and it is much, much more performant than IVL v1 and v0. The Mint module. The Mint module is another thing uh, we're starting right now. There isn't a active working group just because the module is very simple, um, but the biggest change that we want to do is we want to uh, change inflation from blocks per year to time. And so this has been blocked for a while now on uh, proposal-based timestamps. And so now with Comet V1, which we're working on integrating um, and will be part of the next release, we uh, will be implementing um, time-based inflation. 
um, and the Mint module will have the option to be epoch um, And this will also enable us to do more interesting stuff with block times. So we'd be able to do dynamic block times where if there's a lot of transactions, we can speed up the block times. Um, if there's not that many transactions, we can slow down the block times. Um, and this is a feature that um, has uh, part of it, a large part of it is on the comment side, um, but it's been enabled for ages um, and just the SDK um, hasn't been able to take advantage of it um, for a while. Any questions on those things? Those are kind of like our active things that we are um, working on. None, okay. Um, then in, the other things in Q2, I wanted to update you guys on the release. Uh, so, and then we are discussing on auth and distribution on uh, changes that we want there. So the idea we have with the auth module, um, we'll probably, we'll most likely start a short working group because just I, we believe that we can replace the entire auth module with the accounts module. And then users uh, for existing chains, you'll still have to have the auth module just for backwards compatibility, um, but you'll be able, users will be able to migrate their auth account to an account account. Um, and that will greatly simplify the overall system um, and be able to allow you to do different things with those base accounts, key rotation, um, add various custom features to your base account and so on. Distribution, um, we wanna work on distribution to work on auto compounding and also um, make it uh, lazy. So right now it is somewhat lazy, um, but it is over complicated. And so there are many ways we can simplify it but also introduce auto compounding. Um, in all these redesigns, we're also targeting um, compilation targets instead of only the operating system. We also want to be able to target uh, TinyGo. And so, and there's a larger story there um, that we're working on um, and trying to figure out with uh, ZK VMs. And so we're working on how to get SDK approval within SDK VMs. Finally, the release. So Comet has had V1, they've done QA. Um, we're on the final stretch of integrating it. The And talking with the IBC team, um, they've allocated time around the beginning of uh, in Q3 um, to integrate the SDK and to do their QA process. Um, they would like to work on ICS 20 v2 and get that as part of their next major release. And so being that Comet is ready now, um, where we could be ready, but then IBC is not ready for a while, um, we've decided to like push the release a couple months in order to fully flesh out everything that we need to, um, clean up some of the dependency graph that we were gonna push to the next release, but now we have time to do. And overall, just make the experience of upgrading a lot smoother. Um, and be and being that uh, not many chains have upgraded to 50, then we uh, don't see an urgency to do another release because then that makes um, the maintenance burden of maintaining multiple releases harder. Does anyone, uh, is everyone fine with that? Or does anyone have questions? Okay, I'm gonna take silence as we're all fine with that. Um, and yeah, so, okay. So we will be pushing the release a bit, uh, a couple of months, most likely end of, um, no, there, so DYDX upgraded and Paloma upgraded. Um, DYDX chain, from our understanding, is like running fine now. They had a small halt due to IVL v1. Um, it, they had a halt um, after we like fit, had the fix and merged the fix. We just hadn't tagged the fix, um, and then they halted. And then so IVL v1 is now um, running smoothly on Osmosis and uh, DYDX. So I have to check with the Paloma team. Um, but the Osmosis team is using IVL v1 on 47. They are running it on a fork. The YDX is using 50 and Paloma are using 50. Um, there's a couple other chains in the pipeline um, 
that are prepping for 50 and doing the migration and testing. Um, so there are people catching up, um, but we just don't want to rush out another upgrade and then the maintenance burden grows to maintaining multiple releases until everyone upgrades. I mean, and just to add a note, we are on 50. Um, yep. We're just, um, and so congratulations to you and the team, well done. Um, we have another 50 upgrade happening in four hours where um, we will be on IEVL 1. Um, we are seeing some new things around Cosmosm um, and um, Cosmos SDK comms, um, and we'll share those with you, but um, our fingers are crossed that uh, yeah, in four hours we, we expect to be fully um, you know, running uh, an awesome 50, so yeah, good stuff. Nice, nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the idea. Any, I forgot what I was saying before the question, but any other questions on um, release or various features coming into the next release? I was curious about optimistic execution on 50. Um, mm -hmm. That's still in a in a beta phase or, or um, experimental phase. I just wanted to confirm that state. We, we've, we've done testing on it. It's more so that um, like our testing of it, uh, we haven't been able to like do it on a on a like chain test net and like a chain like Bloma or DYDX or Osmosis test net. And so that's why we still marked it as experimental. Um, but there are some people who have played around with it and haven't had issues. Um, or I know, at least like I know people have played around with it and no one's complained. So I'm not sure if they're having issues or not. All right. Yeah, I think we, we're going to. We'll put that out in production and see if we <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, yeah, there's uh, talk to Huangi in the from the crypto.com team. Um, they implemented a variation of block STM, which is like a form of parallelized execution. Um, and they're still like working on it. Uh, and so that could that will be something fun to play around with. And I think in Sura V2, we will look at a lot more optimizations um, just because the code is a lot simpler and a lot easier to understand. We, we will be looking at like a lot of the optimizations around potentially like prefetching keys before execution. So the cache is already warm with all the keys that we will touch, um, the parallelized execution stuff. So there's definitely a lot of areas where we can increase performance, um, but we just aren't too confident in doing that in base app and we don't want to cut another release where people run into issues because of edge cases. And so we are also working on our whole testing infrastructure. Um, we're following in the line of WASMD with their system tests. So Alex is helping us with that. And then that should help alleviate. And we're also working on hiring a DevOps person to run large scale test nets um, to, to um, be able to fully test more mainnet like um, mainnet like scenarios for a lot of these features that we're bringing out. Any other overall questions? Um, we got through the agenda and the updates I wanted to give you guys. Is there any other questions you guys have or technical questions about the SDK? Um, this is kind of just an open floor. Sure. Uh, we uh, uh, posted a note in uh, Cosmos Tech that we've been having problems ever since we did our 45 to uh, to 46 upgrade uh, last month, uh, or no, earlier this month. Uh, we, we're seeing RPC nodes get app hashes, but not uh not uh, the the full validator nodes uh and it, and it seems to be tied into uh relayer requests and i was wondering if that made uh rang a bell for anyone mm, for relayer requests yeah the uh that that uh when a rpc what? node uh Go, it goes down with an app hash on the very next block it includes like a message update client 
Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. Um, but I saw in the chat that there was like discussion around nineteen point six. Yeah, yeah, we we did uh, uh, we did a little uh, patch to, to uh, nineteen point seven and had someone run that, but but then just saw a uh, another app hash on that with with, with the nineteen point seven. Um, it's a on Providence. Did you? It seems like Providence tried twenty. Did you have you guys tried twenty, or is twenty even compatible? Like from uh, the API perspective? Don't know what's don't know what's compatible. Let me let me look that up. So tw twenty isn't isn't compatible with uh, anything less than fifty. Um, we we had we had the uh, in our fork. Uh, we had to, when we bumped to 20, uh, we were based on 46 and, uh, there were a couple changes we had to make in order to do that in the SDK. Uh, oh, it's, it's a common, uh, removal of common BFT DB. That shouldn't, it's interesting that you guys saw D Daniel improvements with 20. Um, it, we're not sure about improvements, but uh, we were hoping that it fixed some app hash things that we've er, er, some app hash mismatch things that we've been seeing, um, and then we're we're it, it hasn't cleared them up, um, and so we're not sure if it helps or not. Interesting. Um, on is it app hash or the block result hash? App hash is the error. Yeah, app hash. Hmm. So I know Osmosis ran into something similar, but it wasn't related to IVL. It was like something with um, a buff pool, a buffer pool with Wasm, but you guys both don't use Wasm. So I don't think Right. And, and we're not certain it's related to IVL. Huh. So, um, so we 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 do use Wasm, um, uh, and um, there was there was one node. There was a query node that we were hammering really hard, and when it would get to a Wasm, uh, or like there were a couple times where there was a block that had a uh, execute contract in it, and the app hash mismatch happened right after that. But the it was so heavy load, and then that transaction came through and. So we don't know if it's related or not. And, you know, there's a chance. Uh, we're just not quite sure uh, exactly what it's coming from. So, like, uh, so I've heard of something similar, but it's like for the other team, it it, was, it resulted in like block result hash, and it was like in weird scenarios. Like, uh, are you guys able to like reproduce it consistently? Uh, uh, no. Still... Yeah, us neither. Yeah. Uh, um, it takes so... several hours of burn in to 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 get it to happen in in the wild. Yeah, I my I had a theory about this a couple of months ago, um, and we like dove because there's like um, we dove into the code pack because like Injective mentioned something similar, and so we like did a bunch of testing um we dove into the code paths and like the code paths were not touching and we kind of we concluded that there's it's like really weird because there isn't really much concurrency in the sdk but it's like we th we hypothesize that it's or i hypothesize that it's something to do with like some weird concurrency issue mm -hmm. that heavy load querying is like bleeding like there's some mutex that isn't being taken out um or the mutex is being taken out somewhere that it's not supposed to um yeah, it's well, very yeah. it's very hard to find yeah well we did a a change at the comet layer to uh create a a new uh client type at that level that allows greater concurrency that that takes uh 
uh, uh, read read write lock depending on on the uh, operation instead of just the mutex because we have a a very long execute phase and mm. we wanted to allow uh, uh, RPC queries during that time. And um, I remember the last team when I worked on Comet, we did something similar as well. Mm -hmm. But then it was reverted, but I don't remember the exact reason. Um, uh, I'd have to dig that up. Like this, this is kind of like the largest premise of why we're doing V2, because like <laughs> base app is a mess. Like it, it's very hard to like add new features with certainty in base app um, because of weird stuff like this. Yeah. All right. Well, if you uh, think of more stuff, we've got the uh, uh, thread in the yeah. Cosmos Tech Slack group. We'll do. We'll do. Um, yeah. I'll go well. go read through the code paths again just to like see if we missed anything. Uh, any other questions from anyone? Yeah. So we're also seeing something interesting. Um, We've upgraded to 0.55 um, a while ago, and it's we've been seeing some really weird behavior where about, you know, I'm going to say like a third of our validator set is just dropping out. So some of them are just experiencing app hashes. Some of them don't. Some of these app hashes seem to result you know, in them not progressing, um, whereas others seem to be able to keep up still despite the app hash. Um, the most interesting thing is uh, we've it, it has hit our validator as well now um, a couple of days ago, so we are halted. We're trying to sync either you know doing a full state sync or doing um, a snapshot. Um, either way, uh, we're always app hashing. Uh, we're using the same version as well. And interestingly, like the hashes were given in the error message, like both expected and actual, like they don't seem to exist on the chain. Like when we use an explorer and we look up. Or we use an about RPC and we look up a you know block by hash or anything. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't exist. Um, do you have any idea what you know might be causing that? Uh, did you guys introduce like a new module with or changes in a module with this upgrade? Not really. Uh, even if we did, I'd expect it. Like I'd, I'd expect the whole set for them like i would i would expect it to be deterministic right deterministically undeterministic um yeah um it's odd because it's only a small subset like a considerable subset but Nothing. and it doesn't it doesn't seem to make a difference if you like use the official release or if you build from source um um let me. I'm not exactly sure what that could be. We can look into it. Christian, uh, you had some additional context on Cosmosm, or you could share that. Sure. Do, I mean, I do mean, the I've, blocks? I've been, the, I've been looking at the logs itself. Right? There's, there's just nothing there apart from you know not able to connect to a peer or something. Um, the only other error message I see in there is um, coming from you know uh, recovering panic in the run transaction, and that comes from the wasm module, and that literally says you know block Unix time must never be empty or negative, which is a bit useless. So I googled it and uh, I found the code that emits it. Right, it's only one one point in the code that emits it, and it is when the wasm module is essentially bootstrapping for a new uh, contract instance, and it checks the you know it, it looks at the context, it extracts the current block height, looks at the time. But because we're syncing, we don't have a block time yet, so it's going to be zero. So that's where that comes from. I don't know if that's the reason for the error, or if that is just a follow-up problem. But so uh, so the blocks that are app hashing, do they all have Wasm transactions in them? I don't know because the hashes don't exist on the chain. 
like, but I, like the, the 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 transactions that were included in the block so like h minus one um so like if if you app hash at block 100 the no 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 there's there's okay. no there's no um contract executions in there interesting i've tried different block heights i've tried different uh yeah i've tried a it's the same if i do a snapshot sync as well uh, or uh, just a state sync no, that's interesting. Um, let me grab this. So there's, here we go. The crypto, oh my, this, oh, there it is. Uh, the crypto.com team has this tool, Python IVL, that kind of like extracts some stuff um, to see what, like, where is the diff be between the two items. It, could be related to that. Um, so, okay, so I would try in your node. Just where are you? Um, can you try turning off fast node, the fast node system in IVL? I don't think it's an IVL. It doesn't sound like an IVL issue, but it's worth just like turning off the fast node system just to double check. Um, it does seem like it's something else. I have a couple theories, but uh, if it's like a if it's like a different error each time, then it's a bit harder to understand. Um, but if it's like the same error every time, if it's like every time is like a wasm panic error, then I think I have a theory on what it could be. But if it's a different error each time, then it kind of like throws me off. It's the same, it's the same error each time. Also, when I did try and use a state sync, I used different block heights, different, um, yeah, I, I just tried different RPCs, different block heights. I always get the same two hashes. So it's always the same hash mismatch, right? Which also leads me to believe it's not real hashes that I'm looking at here. It's maybe hashes of a block that, you know, are being primarily constructed by the node before the sync actually takes place. I don't know, but. Although, like, I don't see a different explanation for that. But yeah, I can turn off um, the fast mode, definitely. Um, OK. Uh, can you send me the panic in, in our signal chat? And then, or just like the excerpt? Yeah, absolutely. And, and then if it gives a code line in, um, does it give a code line in Wasm? I mean, it, it gives a full stack trace, you know, into the okay, yeah. module. Yeah. Do you want to share that? And then I think, um, uh, yeah, and then I can, like, double check the WASM stuff. It should, I am, I'm not sure exactly what happened on the, on the WASM side in this release. So um, that's interesting. I, I don't think it's IVL because Osmosis is running this IVL version on uh, 047, and DYDX doesn't have Cosmosm, and so they're not seeing this, or that it hasn't been reported. Um, so it could, I, I'll double check with them to see what's up. Sure. Yeah, I, I slapped it in the signal chat. It's a, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty hearty. Uh, Trace, so. Awesome, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'll, do, I'll read through this. Oh, there's two read mores. Um, <laughs> awesome, sweet suit. Thank you. Um, any other questions from anyone? Okay, awesome, awesome. Then we can end a few minutes early, get everyone back 17 minutes. And if you're starting the weekend today, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the spring, wherever you are. If you still have Friday, then sneak in a half day and don't tell your employer and have some fun because it is spring. <laughs> All right, guys, have a good one. Ciao, ciao. Thank you.